I am home today because we just had the, the new baby, so I'm trying to stay home as much as possible for the next few days. And I wake up and I've got this error. 41, blower motor fault, and 44, failure to communicate with the blower. So sounds like something with the ECM blower motor. I'm gonna go ahead and investigate, see what we can find. All right, so here's my air handler. Yeah, our, our uh, comm light is on, but our status light is blinking. One, two, three, four, slow blinks. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so four, three, four. One, two, three, four. So 44 is what is blinking. All right, so that's giving me a 44, and then I've got the constant flash on my motor here, but nothing's happening. So now at least I know all my codes. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset power real quick and see if that changes anything before I go any further into diagnosing. All right, well, I have power off. And on these, I always leave power off for at least 30 seconds or so, just so that way if there's you know, any capacitors that need to discharge or whatever. I'm gonna just check my plugs and make sure everything looks good on these. Make sure I don't have any poor connections or any signs of arcing or anything. That's my high voltage plug right there, which is just 240 volts coming in. Make sure they get it back in real nice and snug. And this is my communication plug here. I still see any issues there. Now I'm gonna just check the, just feel the blower and make sure that it's not stuck or anything and that it spins okay. I'm not feeling any bearing play on the end. Nothing weird there. With these, you always check your four pin connectors to make sure they're ABCD connections. Make sure those are snug. That looks good. Look at the board for any signs of anything abnormal. Don't see anything weird. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and kick the power back on, see if we get the same codes. Spun for a little bit and then it stopped. They just not have a call. A lot of times that's what it does, is it just you know it spins one direction and any other direction just to see which direction it has torque to kind of prove that it's uh, functioning properly, that the blower wheel's intact. Um, right now, my flashing lights went away, so let's just see what happens once it goes through time delay. I forced it into operation using the thermostat and it's still not communicating. Now one interesting thing is I didn't have a proper drip loop on it <laughs> as much as I preach about it. Another interesting thing is, is I did a video last night and I was trying to show some maximum airflow and so I had set the thing up for maximum airflow and then I forgot to set it back. But I mean, you know, it's still within the range of operation of this unit. It run, was running a little higher static pressure, I think 0.7, something like that. But then this morning I wake up and I have that communication fault. So that kind of tells me the odds are that in the process of this thing running up to high RPM, something failed inside this motor module. That's definitely my suspicion at this point. All right, so here is the error we're getting in the main screen blower motor fault so we're going to go ahead and remove the blower so that that way we can separate the blower module from the motor we've already confirmed that it will spin up initially when it starts up so when you power up the high voltage it will run but then it just shuts back off it's not communicating through the actual communications pull it off uh, disconnect it and we're also gonna we're gonna ohm out the motor just because that's a process that you manufacturer says they want you to follow to check the motor against the module but at this at this point i'm as i'm as confident as i can be that it that it is the actual module. I've checked all the visual connections. In, in this particular case, we're communicating with the indoor board, so the thermostat's communicating with the board. It's just that the board isn't communicating with the blower. All right, so I've got my cheapy six and one here. I, you're gonna notice that I don't use a nut driver very often. And certainly for those of you who are doing a lot of production in the field, you may want to use a nut driver, but the, it's really important that you don't strip out screws. So I use just a, just a simple quarter inch hand nut driver just to make sure that I'm not going to ruin any threads. Again, that's just me, but I would rather do things just a touch slower and not ruin threads. Um, especially not a fan of impacts when it comes to this sort of thing. I mean, they certainly have their, their place. So that is a motor module, and this is what we call a potted motor module because they actually have this you know, rubber, latex rubber looking stuff. I don't know if it is latex rubber, but um, that actually sits inside this module that keeps it from getting moisture in it, which is a nice feature. Helps them to last a little bit longer. The first thing I'm always doing when I look at any of these things is I'm just looking at anything that looks weird, anything abnormal, melted, burned, 
In this case, we know that the motor was running when it would start up and I didn't feel any bearing play. There was nothing abnormal going on there. So I'm just gonna take a quick look at the windings and make sure there's nothing abnormal visually in here. I don't smell anything abnormal. And one thing that's kind of neat about this motor, you can see in here, it's got a rotor, but then the rotor has permanent magnets attached to it. So you see these permanent magnets actually attached to the rotor itself. That's part of what makes an ECM motor an ECM motor, and that's how it's able to sense its position because you have this uh, magnetic force that's being generated from the rotor itself, and it also doesn't require an energizing current, which makes it a little more efficient. Uh, but everything looks, looks pretty good inside here. I'm not seeing anything especially abnormal. So we're going to go ahead and ohm it out um, just to make sure, but it looks like we're looking at a motor module. All right, so I went ahead and pulled the uh, old module out, bringing it to the shop because we had someone pick up one from uh, the local supply house and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and swap it out and bring it home and install it. ECM 3.0 motor. Of course, this one actually doesn't say ECM 3.0, the old one does, but you can see right here it says ECM 3.0. Half horsepower, we are good to go. Whenever working with uh, any sort of variable frequency drive, which is what an ECM motor module is. You always want to make sure that you leave it disconnected from high voltage for five minutes at least, and it varies unit to unit, but you want to make sure that it's been disconnected for a while before you go in there touching anything so you don't get a shock. Go ahead and just, just as a good practice, we're gonna uh, do the test that you would do on the motor itself. Now this is a three-phase motor, which means all the winding should read essentially identical ohm readings to each other. So we're going to check each winding to the other, each other winding first. 10.5, 10 10.5, 10.4, 10, yeah, right in there. Right, 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 all pretty much the same. There we go. All right, now we're going to check each winding to ground. Now again, that's not the issue that we're having with this unit, so I would be very surprised if we would find anything significant to ground. So it's reading in the microfarad scale, or actually in the nanofarad scale, but let's change it to just ohms. It's going to go to the mega ohm scale. We got nothing. So the motor spins well, has no shows no signs of overheating, shows no significant bearing play. Um, I'm not seeing any rotor damage and the windings zoom out properly to each other and to ground. Uh, we have no path to ground, so I feel good about going ahead and installing our motor module. All right, we kicked on, we're communicating, we're running. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the panels on, leave that in. Yeah. 770-3 inside there so I can monitor the amp draw as it runs, but uh, we're looking like we're in good shape. So now we've uh, got it running. 770-3 is inside the cabinet, and so we're measuring from the outside, and uh, we're just gonna monitor as it comes up to speed. I'm gonna go downstairs and take a look at the thermostat, make sure we don't have any codes or anything abnormal going there. I've, I've just got one screw in the panel, just kind of holding it on, but I think, we're, I think we're good to go. All right, so now just to test it out, up at full speed, we're gonna put it in service mode. Let's hold down the service mode icon for an extended period of time until it turns green, which always seems like an eternity when I'm in the process of doing it. There we go, turn green. And then we're gonna go to checkout. I'm going to go to cooling, right up to stage five for 10 minutes. So we're running on the fifth stage of my carrier VNA8, 1200 CFM, 0.4 static pressure. Everything is looking good. Let's go up and check our amperage on our blower at full speed. All right, so our blower is drawing 2.1 amps at full load, 0.4 static, and we are rated for 0.5 on this one on the data tag. Full load amps is 4.3, so all is, all is well. All's well that ends well. 
All right, so another tool that I didn't show initially in the video that I just want to make sure that we cover is the Tech Inspect by Gentech. You can find out more at the dealertoolbox.com. And this tool is the latest version of a series of tools that have been out for testing ECM motors. And it's very, very simple. You just take the low voltage section, so not the high voltage, but the actual control inputs from the motor. You disconnect them, you connect these plugs in, and then you connect these two. Uh, alligator jaws to 24 volts. The biggest challenge with these is is that there's sometimes it's sometimes pretty difficult to find a good solid spot to connect to constant 24, especially on modern communicating systems. My Infinity system is no exception to that. When you connect 24 volts, this will light up. The biggest mistake I see techs make because they have these big jaws is they to connect it to 240 or 120 and then they fry their motor. And that's a bummer. So um, one thing you can do is you can use a 9-volt battery. This used to be kind of standard practice. Recently, Gentech is saying 24 volts only. Um, and I'm going to show you a little trick here. It does definitely work. Uh, but you need to make sure that you connect the right polarity. So if you connect the blue to the negative side and the black to the positive side, because this is an LED, it won't light up. But if you connect the black to the negative side and the blue to the positive side, see, we got ourselves a green light. And uh, I have confirmed that this does work, but I'll show you real quick just so you can be 100% sure. And in my system, this was perfect because in my particular case, um, there's no good place to connect the 20, these to 24 without disconnecting stuff and, and uh, making it a much more difficult job than it needs to be. Now I'm going to do this test after I've already installed the new module and it's functioning uh, because I, I didn't need this tool in order to diagnose and show this, but I just want to show you how to do it in case you do have this tool. The disconnect is off. You don't want to be messing around with plugs on these. I've already got it disconnected here. So this is the regular communications plug here. This is, like I mentioned before, an ECM 3.0. So now I'm going to take this, attempt to do this one-handed. This is one thing that a lot of people don't mention about doing YouTube videos, is that doing things one-handed makes it a lot more difficult. All right, there we go. So we're connected in. That's in snug. Again, you can see the blower's off. Make sure that this switch starts in the off position position all right all right so we got the black and blue leads and like I mentioned the blue needs to go on the positive which is the smaller one the black on the larger one the black one tends to all right so there we go we got the black now on the negative side just barely on there and then the blue will stay on the positive side so I'll usually just kind of hold it so that way it doesn't slide off I know it seems like a pain in the butt but it's still easier than the other option so I'm just kind of going to hold it so it doesn't slide off. Got my green light there. We're going to flip the power on with it off so we can make sure that it doesn't run. And it is not running. You can see the light from my uh, PCO up above showing that it's not running. And now we're going to flip this on. So now we know that the motor and module are both functional on this unit. Again, of course they are because I just replaced them, but that's a good diagnostic test to prove that you don't have a problem with the motor and module. So if it wasn't working, then you did this and it did work, then that tells you that it's in the, the, uh, you know, the harness or the control board feeding. That tells you it's either in the harness or the control board feeding it. If it wasn't running, you connect this, flip it on, and then it does run. This just basically proves that the motor and module are both working. And they are, because I just replaced them. Mm -hmm.